and guiding me each and every day. Thank you, Mother. Look at the importance of having adab and manners with your parents. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after speaking about Tawheed, after ordering humanity to worship Him alone, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly after it refers to being kind to your parents, treating them with adab, with respect. The manners that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that uh, bring up these qualities in the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in people of deen, people that fear Allah, and listen to the advice Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are giving the ummah. If one of them or both of them attain old age, when they reach this age, when now after being strong, they need your assistance. They need more adab, more respect, more kindness. Now, before your parents, subhanAllah, they were, they were mashallah, maybe healthy. Now when they reach this old age, they, are, they feel this weakness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordained that this human being because is, is brought to this dunya weak. Allah ladi khalaqakum min da'afin. You start weak. Thumma ja'ala min ba'da da'afin quwwa. Then after this weakness comes strength, youth, energy. Thumma ja'ala min ba'da quwwatin da'afan wa shayba. And then after this strength and energy comes back again. The cycle comes back again. Weakness and need. So when your parents reach this level, imma yablughanna, imma yablughanna indaka al-kibara ahaduhuma aw kilahuma fala taqul lahuma uffin. Don't, don't treat them with disrespect. Don't say a word of bad manners, a word of disrespect, a word of annoyment, uff in Arabic language. فَلَا تَقُلْ لَمَا أُفٍ وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا And don't raise your voice. Don't move your hands when you speak to them. Don't speak to them in, with lack of manners, lack of adab. فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفٍ وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا وَقُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا And speak to them in the best of way. Choose the best of words when you speak to your parents. وَقُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا وَاخْفِضْ لَهُمَا جَنَاحَ الظُّلِّ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ And treat them, the nearest meaning of the ayah, treat them with humility and mercy and humbleness. وَاخْفِضْ لَهُمَا جَنَاحَ الظُّلِّ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ وَقُلْ رَبِّ الْحَمْهُمَا كَمَا رَبَّيَانِ صَغِيرًا And ask Allah to have mercy on them, to forgive them and to give them reward as they have brought me up when I was young. The reason why me and you are struggling to bring the complete deen in our life is that shaitan has managed one way or the other, the devil has managed one way or the other to trick us that death is very, very far from you. Death is not coming now. You're not dying tonight. You're not dying tomorrow. You're not dying in a week. You're still living. Tool al-amal as Rasulullah described it. Tool al-amal. The, the human being has what? Has long, long and uh, very, very yani, big hopes in life. I will still live. I will do this. I will grow up. I will see my kids grow up. I will take them to university. I will get them married. I will do this business. I will do this. Long, long, long hopes. And death is reality. Reality is this death. That we're all facing it. And it might be closer to you than what you think. How many times have all of us, yeah, it happened to most of us that you know a friend of yours, young in age, youth, mashallah, especially here in Sydney, happens a lot of times. He was with me yesterday, 
Wallah, one week ago we were out together. This happened and that happened and inna lillahi wa inna raj'un. Car accident, <coughs> shooting, problems, sickness. He just died. And then we get affected for a while. Subhanallah. He was my close friend. We get affected for a bit. But then what happens? Quickly we forget. We pray janaza. Everyone is there. If you're a close member of family, you see the body. You see it being washed. You see them, you know, the taqseel. And then our hearts get touched. But then this doesn't last. One day, two days, and life goes on. We forget again that death might be very close. This is why the ulama say, اِحْذَرُ التَّسْوِيف فَإِنَّ الْمَوْتَ يَأْتِي بَغْتَ Beware from saying, I will do, I will do, I will make tawbah, I will come close. Inshallah, I have intentions. Beware of saying, سَوْفَ أَفْعَلْ I will do. فَإِنَّ الْمَوْتَ يَأْتِي Because death comes suddenly. complete darkness and then the person is alone in the house what happens sometimes every now and then you get this fear of the dark do you hear something is there a noise can you did you hear this what's that and you find your heart down there sometimes you wake up at night even your family everyone around you your family is there but they're asleep and you go to have a drink, drink of water and you get that fear in your heart you are in your house with your family and still there's this little bit of fear of the dark. Imagine my brothers and sisters dying and being alone in that grave. Subhanallah, I'm sure most of us have seen the sight of putting a family member or a friend of yours in that grave. Imagine being alone in the darkness, not knowing where you're going to Jannah or to Jahannam, not knowing what will happen to you. All your family members have deserted you and left you. Actually, we as the hadith says, when the person gets this, when the people put the janazah, they put the, the, the deceased in the grave, and then they close the grave, the person can hear everything. He hears his family departing. He hears the footsteps on the floor. Imagine, imagine that moment in your life. Imagine that second in your life. All of us know we are dying. All of us know we are going to that place, to that grave. Imagine being put in your grave and your family members are all going. All the people, the funeral, your mother, your father, your wife, your kids, they're all there and start taking steps and leaving. What will you feel? How will you feel? Where are you going to get security from at that time? What will, what, what, what will you be thinking of? Imagine, all of them deserting you, you're alone, in the dark, no light, no torch. You can't just, you know, you know, touch a switch or something and, you know, and and why do come That it's reality. It's very very serious. And then how how, how will the person be feel then? According to amal, according to your deeds, according to the life you lived in this world. What, don't you aren't you willing? Aren't you willing to do some trade, some business? Are we willing to sacrifice a bit of our time, a bit of our life, a, a bit of our comfort to make sure that my time, the time I spend. In that grave, from the second I get buried to the judgment day, it gets a bit comfortable, gets a bit easy, have a bit of security. Wallahi, the, the grab of the grave, the squeeze of the grave is unbelievable. 